What's up, everybody? Welcome to Move the Sticks. DJ, Bucky, and Bucky, before the season started, if I had told you heading into week three of the NFL season, <laughs> Jared Goff, not going to see him on the field, but we are going to see Jacoby Brissett starting for the New England Patriots. So what are you thinking? I absolutely would believed it. Come on. Why well, wouldn't I believe that Jacoby Brissett <laughs> would get on the field? Third-round pick, playing behind Tom Brady and Jimmy Garoppolo. There's no way anyone thought he would be on the field. No, this is unbelievable. So that the question there on the bottom of the screen, who is Jacoby Brissett? Let's go back in time during the draft evaluation process. But I, I, we talked about him on path to the draft in the, in the run-up to the draft. Didn't spend a lot of time on him, but what were your thoughts? I thought he was a developmental prospect. He's a guy that was a two-year starter at NC State, started his career at Florida. I liked his size, 6'4", 235 pounds. I liked his leadership ability. I liked the poise that he played with during his time at NC State. And I thought he was an accurate player who offered some athleticism some things that you could do outside the pocket. I thought he'd be a nice guy to come in and eventually develop, and maybe down the line he could be a frontline starter. Yeah, I thought he was a developmental project. I thought he still kind of looked like a backup long-term to me. The things I like, you touch on the size. I thought he had great touch for a, for a bigger quarterback. The concerns I had, I thought he held the ball a lot. I thought he didn't have that internal clock to really kind of crank up the urgency there. I questioned some of his awareness on some of the pressures that came after him. Uh, so those were my concerns about him. But, you know, look, he, he played last week. He had to fill in after Garoppolo goes down, Buck. And I thought he did a good job with what they gave him. And what they gave him when I went back and, and looked at all the throws that he made, talking about a lot of three-step, getting yep. the ball outside, quick outs, little jerk routes underneath, hit a, a shallow cross. When, when, when things were decided before the snap, save for one crosser that he hit right here, you see this one to Martellus Bennett where Byron Maxwell maybe makes the worst tackle attempt I've ever seen. Uh, that one was kind of a scheme play. Everything else, right on rhythm, he was successful. Now, they take a seven-step drop with him, he takes a sack. He doesn't throw on his third step from the gun, he gets a sack and a fumble. So, to me, they got to find ways to get him on the move, get him outside, run the ball really well, and throw the ball quickly. If you want him to set up in the pocket, I think some of those issues with him holding the ball and some of those awareness things I saw in college – we will see them at this level as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with your assessment on Jacoby Brissett and how he played last week, but we also know that the New England Patriots are as good as anybody at crafting a game plan that allow any quarterback to succeed. We saw them have success with Matt Castle under center. I think they have similar success with Jacoby Brissett. They're not going to ask him to do a lot of things that are kind of out of his skill set. I will expect him to see him do some passes on the move, some bootlegs, some run action stuff. I think they'll try and keep the quick game in, but they'll find a way to generate it. When I watched him over the course of the preseason, the thing that was impressive to me, I felt like he got better and better each week with more time and more experience. Against the Carolina Panthers in week three, he was at his best. He had a nearly perfect performance in terms of his passes and attempts. The ball came out of his hands quickly. They would see a lot of screens. I think you will see a similar game plan and they will try and play small ball put it on the defense to make things happen, and hopefully they can get a couple plays from him in the passing game that is enough to separate them at the end of the game. You were saying that anybody can be successful in the system, so I'm racking my brain trying to think of these old-school backup quarterbacks. I want to say Rohan Davey. Yeah. With the New England Patriots. Rohan Davey won a Super Bowl with them, I think. Uh, well, yeah, he was, he was leading right down the field, that big drive. There. Rohan Davey just, just scout, marching scout, him. Right, scout right team down. quarterback. <laughs> He was MVP the on the scout team, huh? All right, this is a big game here, Buck. We've got Houston going up against Jacoby Brissett and the New England Patriots. I got to go with Houston. I, I got a chance to watch what they're doing in their sub packages on defense and all the rushers they can throw at you. They got some guys on offense. If Houston gets a lead in this game and Jacoby Brissett has to play from behind, I think Houston's in great shape. They're in great shape, but I think the – New England Patriots find a way to get it done. Bill Belichick will make sure that he holds that explosive offense on the other side down. And I think they'll kind of take advantage of some of the things that are available in the back end. I look for Jacoby Brissett not to necessarily light it up, but he'll make enough plays and a critical play that helps them win. Jacoby Brissett and the New England Patriots. Bucky Brooks is all in. Look, I'm waiting for Tom Brady to come back because this team looks pretty good without him. I can't wait to see what the Patriots look like when they get their leader back.